What is going on guys and welcome to the fourth episode of the women series. If you are new, my name is Dr. Stephanie Buttermore and today I am boldly going to tackle the subject of birth control. Now I know I've covered some complex topics so check out my other episodes if you haven't seen them, but due to the nature of your interests, I'm going to focus on physique related concepts in regards to birth control. So make sure you like the video if you like my scientific videos and let's just get into it. So we've all heard of birth control having scary side effects like blood clotting, cramping, sore breasts, headaches, and depression. But what about the thing we are all secretly wondering? Will it make me fat? I was on the pill for about six years. I was gaining weight. A little bit puffy and a little bit swollen and everything. And then you step on the scale and you're like, what is this? She's I didn't sign up for this weight gain. So it's obvious why we think it makes us gain weight. Every time you mention birth control, it's always linked to weight gain, retaining water and bloating. And weight gain is actually the primary reason women discontinue using birth control. And I'm sure you all have either experienced weight gain yourself or know a friend, colleague or family member that has because of birth control. Nowadays, birth control comes in many different forms. Most commonly used are an oral combination pill, the mini pill, intrauterine devices, subdermal implantation, a patch or a shot. Hormonal birth control uses synthetic hormones that either prevent ovulation from happening by thickening the mucus surrounding your cervix to prevent sperm from getting in, or both. These are ethanol estradiol and progestins, which mimic female reproductive hormones, estrogen and progesterone. So what does the science say about these synthetic hormones? Will they make you gain weight? So after scouring the literature, a few systematic reviews basically led me down the familiar road of it depends. And there isn't enough research to make conclusions. So looking a bit deeper, one of the kinks in the research is that they always compare reported means, which is generally how science is conducted. But if you take a closer look at the actual data points that represent individual women, some of the numbers can be more shocking than no statistic difference. For example, in one study comparing weight gain of women taking a hormonal IUD, Mirena, a subdermal implant, Implanon, which is the previous version of Next on, or a long-acting shot called Depo-Provera. And there were huge variations within each group that can actually skew the average, making these results somewhat misleading. Looking at an individual using Implanon, one woman saw a 36 pound weight loss, but another woman on the other end of the spectrum gained 72 pounds. The low end of women taking Mirena was a loss of 35 pounds, but the other end was a 42 pound weight gain. These huge variations within groups make looking at an average very misleading. And a lot of the research on the combination pill and the mini pill had similar results, where the average is not much different than the control, but the individual numbers are pretty staggering in either direction of weight loss or weight gain. So you might hate me for saying this, but it appears that weight gain is highly variable on the individual, which isn't surprising because every woman when they start birth control are genetically different, have a different starting body fat percentage, and are hormonally in a very different place than one another. So it really does depend, but there are a few culprits that we can nail down. It seems the newer generation of the mini pill which contains only progestin, the synthetic form of progesterone, has less often been touted to cause weight gain, where the combination pill has both progestin and synthetic estrogen, has been correlated to more weight gain and water retention. This is believed to be because of the potency of the synthetic estrogen. There is also evidence that if you have a higher starting body fat percentage, then you are more likely to gain more weight. And simply some women have a higher propensity for weight gain, as we we also see in women who are not on any form of birth control. And another known culprit that we can say with some certainty is that Depo-Provera, a long acting high dosed first generation progestin shot, is fairly notorious for causing weight gain and making weight loss very difficult. In one study, they saw an average weight gain of 11 pounds with fat gain of nine pounds over three years. And the shot also doubled the risk of becoming obese. And some believe this is because of the type of progestin used. They have androgenic effects as well as a significant effect on appetite. So that's just something to keep in mind when selecting a birth control that's right for you. So other than weight gain, 
what else can birth control do to affect your physique? Well, another thing to note is birth control's effect on decreasing women's testosterone levels. Now this is bad because we need the low amounts we do have for proper physiology. Unfortunately, birth control can decrease total and free testosterone by up to 50%, which can have detrimental effects on your training, strength, performance, as well as your ability to gain muscle. I find this to be an important thing to note, assuming you have physique goals in mind. A drop in testosterone is also the reason, if you've ever been curious, that some women experience a drop in sex drive. And decreased testosterone is also the reason birth control is often prescribed to women with PCOS, who often have an increased level of testosterone. So the birth control can help by lowering it. Keep in mind that these effects do not include the copper IUD because they are non hormonal hormonal and actually also exclude hormonal IUDs because its hormonal effects are localized to just the uterus. So that's just another thing to keep in mind when choosing the type of birth control that is right for you. Now, another big concern women have is related to fertility and their ability to have children after they stop birth control. So is this something women should fear? Well, a 2011 comprehensive review looking at women using the pill, subdermal implants, IUD, copper IUD, or had the shot, looked at rates of pregnancy after stopping their birth control for one year. And the results were positive. This review included 15 studies and they showed pregnancy rates of people who used birth control were similar to those who didn't. So essentially, women, regardless of the type of birth control they were using, had no issues getting pregnant after stopping birth control and no increases of abnormal risks during delivery. Now, birth control isn't all bad and like I said, can be used to treat PCOS. It can treat amenorrhea in women who have lost their menstrual cycle, can actually help with weight loss if your hormones were kind of wacky to start with, can help with acne, severe PMS, and PMDD, and of course help prevent unwanted pregnancy. So with all of that being said, I'd like to leave you with a few takeaways to wrap all of this together. And keep in mind, these are paying lip service to physique related symptoms, but this may not be a priority if you are having other issues. So make sure you put those of more importance first before thinking of what birth control can do to your physique. Okay. Here we go. The combination pill, which has synthetic estrogen and progestin, might cause weight gain and more water retention from the synthetic estrogen. The mini pill or progestin only pill, in some cases can help with weight loss and can clear acne, but you are not doubly protected from pregnancy as you are with the combination pill. Both pills are taken daily, but the mini pill needs to be taken at the exact same time every single day. So if you are the forgetful type, both pills and especially the mini pill may not be the best option for you. Subdermal implants like Nexplanon or Implanon are rod-like implants that deliver a synthetic hormone that can last up to three years. It may have similar side effects to oral birth control, but may be a better option if you are more forgetful. And just keep in mind that both oral birth control and subdermal implants may decrease levels of testosterone. A copper IUD does not affect your hormones, but protects from pregnancy by acting as a spermicide. A hormonal IUD like Mirena releases a form of progesterone that can last up to five years. It only affects the hormones locally in the uterus, so it will not likely change testosterone levels. Depo-Provera is an early generation form of progestin that you get about every three months. This is great if you can't remember to take a pill, but has some of the nastier side effects and is notorious for weight gain. I would personally look into another option over this one. However, it is ultimately up to you and your doctor because many women use birth control for more more than just preventing pregnancy. So take this information with a grain of salt. And if you want a deeper look into the effects of birth control, I highly recommend checking out the women's book by Lyle McDonald. There's a huge section on hormones and birth control in there that has way more information and detail than I could provide in just a quick video. So that is all I have for you. It would mean the world to me if you could like the video before you leave and you can subscribe here by clicking on this icon and check out my last women's series video here. I love you all so much and until next time, bye.